In many parts of the world, moderate alcohol consumption is considered normal and acceptable. But there is no place for alcohol consumption in the workplace, especially for those working on board ships. Whether you are an officer of the watch on a container ship or on the purser's staff on a cruise ship, you will have a vital part to play in the ship's organization. Your duties will always include emergency duties. High alcohol levels in your blood will dramatically affect your ability to perform those duties. Alcohol is a chemical. Its effect on you is determined by the amount of pure alcohol there is in the drinks you consume. This is often measured in units. A small beer, a glass of wine, a measure of sherry or port, and a measure of spirits all contain about one unit of alcohol. That is 10 milliliters of pure alcohol. A large glass of ordinary beer or a large glass of wine contains two units, whereas a bottle of wine, either still or sparkling, contains between six to nine units. There are 30 units of alcohol in a bottle of spirits. These figures are only rough guides. You can do the calculation for any drink you are consuming. Look on the label. This can of beer contains 330 milliliters and has an alcohol content of 4.5%. That makes nearly 15 milliliters of pure alcohol, one and a half units. It's better to drink slowly and to keep to drinks with low alcohol content. When you drink, the alcohol passes from the mouth to the stomach. Here, about 20% of it is absorbed directly into the blood. The remainder moves into the small intestine, where it too is absorbed into the blood. The alcohol circulates around the body, reaching and affecting every organ, notably the brain and the liver. Alcohol is a depressant. In the brain, it affects the central nervous system, resulting in changes in behavior and motor function. In the liver, alcohol is broken down. There, alcohol is destroyed at the rate of about one unit per hour. This is the only way that the alcohol levels in the body are lowered. There is no quick cure Black coffee, large amounts of water and so on, do not work. Time and the action of the liver is the only way. Alcohol also has long-term effects on the body and the brain. Doctors have found alcohol intake above a certain level is a threat to your health. The recommended safe limit for men is three to four units per day. And for women, it's less. Two to three units per day. It's good to have a couple of alcohol-free days each week. Good health is compatible with drinking if you are prepared to keep below these sensible limits. As far as the effect on the brain is concerned, all that matters is how much pure alcohol you are consuming and how fast. Remember too that the effects of alcohol can last for many hours. It's my round, isn't it? You should really watch yourself. You know how the old man feels about drinking. Well, you never see him drinking, but he's all right about it. He's okay about it if you're not drinking on his ship. Well, I don't. Anyway, with this day work, there's no problem. I mean, I admit I like a drink now and again when I'm ashore. But it's not as if I can't handle it. <laughs> I tell you what, I think we should have had another one. Are you kidding? No, no, I'm serious.
thought I'd better check myself with a breathalyzer. I hope I'm under 40. It's standard practice in many companies for officers to check that their alcohol blood level is below 40 before they go on watch. Oh, no. Drinking while in any position of responsibility is completely unacceptable. Hello, control room. Hello, John. It's Dave here. Look, could you do me a favor? I've just measured myself on the breathalyzer and I'm over the limit. Just over, mind. You're over? I'll be well below within an hour. But could you do the first hour of my watch for me? An hour? Yeah, okay, I suppose so. It's reasonably quiet down here. I was on shore with Eddie. You know what he's like. Yeah, but that's no excuse, is it, mate? Yeah. Thanks. Alcohol has a powerful slowing effect on everybody's reaction time and decision-making, whether they admit it or not. The actual effect on the brain and body is governed by the blood alcohol concentration, or BAC. That is the actual level of alcohol that is in the bloodstream. There isn't a simple relationship between units of alcohol drunk and blood alcohol concentration. It depends on how much is drunk, how fast it is drunk, whether it is after a recent meal, your body weight and your metabolic rate. A rough guide is that one unit will give a BAC of 15 to 20. That's in milligrams of alcohol in 100 milliliters of blood. As the blood alcohol concentration increases, more and more vital functions are impaired. Effects on the central nervous system start at a BAC of 30. At a BAC of 40, perhaps only two units, you will feel relaxed and cheerful. But you will be less alert and your reaction times will be slower than normal. Although you might think otherwise. But you are twice as likely to injure yourself or have an accident. At this level, it is currently illegal for you to be in a position of responsibility on board a ship in an increasing number of countries, including the United States. Moderate drinkers could easily be over this limit. After a drinking session, you might still have this level the following morning. So it's a good rule never to drink in the four hours before you go on watch. At a BAC of 80, you will feel warm and confident. But if you drive, you are four times as likely to have an accident. At this level, it is illegal for you to drive in many countries. With a BAC of 120, you are five times more likely to have a road accident. You cannot concentrate properly. Reaction times are very slow. Both physical coordination and dexterity is severely impaired. At 150, you are over 10 times more likely to have a road accident. Your speech will be slurred and you will appear to be obviously drunk. Beyond these levels, coherent action is not really possible. Vital functions are increasingly impaired until death can occur at a blood alcohol concentration of 400. Accident statistics show the result of this drastic reduction in concentration and reaction time. Studies have shown that 60% of fatal accidents at work are alcohol-related. In the United States, 40% of traffic fatalities are alcohol-related. There are many statistics, but they all tell the same story. Alcohol affects everybody's ability to perform and make decisions. Two, one. 
This can be seen in the laboratory as well as in real life. This person was connected up to an EEG machine which measures the brain's electrical activity. At a blood alcohol concentration of 40, the change in brainwave patterns is clearly visible. Results in these studies show that the great majority of people's performance deteriorates even at this level. This is because alcohol knocks out the sophisticated control systems of the brain. It diminishes control. Often, it releases pent-up aggression. One beer. Anyone who has worked in bars is likely to have seen aggressive behavior brought on by heavy drinking. This can be a real problem on passenger ships. Hey. I need beer. Please, sir, you already drink too much. Okay? No. I'm not okay. Sorry. And personnel need to be able to refuse to serve drinks to those who have had too much. Safety officer, this is Cosmopolitan, but there is fight here. Please call the security. Your company will have procedures to deal with this problem, and they must be followed. Excuse me, sir. No, come in. This will usually include taking a passenger to their cabin. The security staff will need the proper training in dealing with aggression. Please, put me on the bed. Later, the individual should be regularly checked to ensure their safety and health. It's important not to let the situation develop into something serious, as it often does ashore. In the United States, alcohol is associated with 68% of manslaughters, 54% of murders and attempted murders, and 62% of assaults. But the price of excess alcohol is not limited to violence and accidents. Excess drinking has a detrimental effect on every organ in the body, particularly the liver and brain. This shows a normal, healthy liver. And this is the liver of a heavy drinker. This shows a digital x-ray of a healthy brain. And this is the brain of a habitual hard drinker. The brain shrinkage, usually found in heavy drinkers, can clearly be seen. This kind of damage will happen to the brain and liver of everyone who drinks to excess. The effect of this deterioration shows up in the health statistics of all countries. The more people drink, the more these diseases occur. Statistics show that a healthy person in onshore employment takes on average 12 days off work every year through illness. The heavy drinker takes 80 days off each year. But it's not always easy to spot the heavy drinker in the workplace. Eddie, before you go, uh, there was something I wanted to have a word with you about, just between the two of us. Sure, Peter. I may be jumping to conclusions a bit, but uh, I'd like to give you a friendly warning about boozing. I admit I like a drop now and then, but I've got it well under control. I've never let it interfere with the work. I'm very glad to hear that. But what can happen is that it can get beyond the point where you can control it. I mean, you don't realise you can't control it until it's gone too far. Yeah, well, sir, can I, I hear what you're saying, but I really don't think it applies to me. That's good, because I wanted to talk to you before it really does become a problem. The way things are now, if any officer has any history of alcohol abuse, he's liable to be barred from positions of real responsibility. Even though the company has a program to provide help before the situation develops beyond the point of no return. The objective for the supervisor is to try to put the person with the problem in touch with experts who can diagnose the trouble and who will know best 
how to do something yeah. about it. Second, I understand what you, you're saying, but it is not the supervisor's job to solve the situation. I've only sort of seen the objective the must be to assist the individual, to offer help and possible rehabilitation. By starting a dialogue, by trying to help rather than punish, you will be doing that person a great service. Dan, I would like to talk with you something. I heard that you have problem with this. In the end, it's all about safety and the health of those on board. If you think anyone has developed an alcohol problem, it's better to discuss it with him or her, rather than ignore it. The International Transport Workers Federation has published guidelines. The ILO, the International Labour Organization, has issued a code of practice emphasizing the preventative approach in dealing with alcohol and substance abuse. Your company will have a policy that is based on this code of practice. The abuse of alcohol is no longer acceptable at sea or in ship management. Some administrations, such as the United States, insist on mandatory testing for everyone, regardless of nationality or the ship's flag state, after any serious marine incident in their waters. Drinking is for many a great pleasure. For others, it is the direct or indirect cause of accidents and sickness, unhappiness, injury and death. But in spite of this terrible toll that alcohol exacts on many lives, there is often a great deal of social pressure on people to drink more. For seafarers drinking ashore, Alcohol abuse can lead to unprotected sex with the risk of AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases, or alternatively, to the risk of violence and injury. About one in 25 regular drinkers develops into a problem drinker. Do you know anyone whose drinking is controlling him or her? In the long run, you'll be doing them a favor by bringing their attention to the problem. If you're drunk, your physical coordination and ability to react will be reduced. You become a liability for your colleagues. If you keep your drinking under control, you won't harm your health or place your ship in jeopardy.